Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the only podcast on the internet that actually has blast processing. I am Jimbo from Retro Game Lounge. That is Tyler from Metroid's Primed, and welcome back to a new episode, episode, Tyler, of the Nerd Bucket Podcast. Tyler, how the fuck are you doing this week, man? Man, I'm doing so good after a nice week off. Took well, off Labor wasn't Day. Nice? Wasn't that nice? Oh, man, it was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, got to do a little bird hunting. We we had nice. dove, season, dove season opened up down here and uh, got to play a lot of games. So that was really nice. Did you? Oh, well, yeah. Well, well, oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, that that's not, a, that's not a bait at all. I mean, what kind of games were you playing, Tyler? Well, I finally, after about a year, <laughs> are you excited to... Are you excited to hear about okay, this? Is, I know the <laughs> listeners, not the viewers, can't see this, but this is my excited face. <laughs> yeah. Well, after about a year of just sitting around collecting dust, I finally dusted off Shadows of Mordor. And, oh my God, is that game incredible? I mean, it got a lot of Game of the Year honors back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know why... Yeah, I was just stuck in a rut for a long time, not playing any modern games mm-hmm. on the Xbox One. And, um, you know, I'm glad I finally, um, other than Rare Replay, you know, broke in a, a newer game. And uh, basically, Shadows of Mordor takes everything cool from Assassin's Creed and just pumps it up to 11, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> across the boards. I mean, the brutality and just the ruthlessness of, of some of the combos and stuff and it's ridiculous i mean you're like stabbing orcs through the eyes beheading them i mean it's, it's none of this ridiculous like assassin's creed you know faceless people running around yeah but um i really hope they make a sequel to that game um just okay. from what i've played so far it's really awesome i've heard a lot of good things about it a few of my buddies have it and they keep telling me like dude you need to get this and uh, I think, you know, I've been on kind of an Xbox One kick myself lately, been racking up stuff left and right uh, to see what I got, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have to tune into my show, Retro Game Hall. Can't give it, I can't give it all away on here, man. Like, that's, Shame, like, shameless plug. Shameless, shameless plug. I mean, you know, I, I got to pay for all this shit somehow. So, right. <laughs> But, um, no, nah, I've been gaming too, man. Um, I've been uh, doing quite a bit. Uh, I went back to Payday 2 kind of dusted off that been playing it with my buddy um i did have a chance to play uh gears of war ultimate and that actually brings me to to a talking point um that that i'd like to bounce off you well first before i go into my shit have you played it yet uh no i've not popped in my copy yet okay so um, obviously we're not going to give you any spoilers from the game, ladies and gentlemen, because the game's almost 10 years old. So if you haven't fucking played Gears of War... Too damn bad. Yeah, tough shit. So, you know, <laughs> it's the same game, just polish, you know. The frame rate is better. Um, as I understand, it's running at 60 frames, and that does show. Um, particularly when you chainsaw someone. Like, if you... You'll just notice it's more fluid. Like, it just, it just seems to roll a little bit better. Obviously, since we're, we're using a huge amount more processing power. Um, and the visuals are good. You know, it does look polished. It's not just upscaled. They went back and they redid the textures and everything. So it does look better than any other Gears of War game ever has. I'll give them all the credit in the world. Okay. There's two problems I have with this. Uh, number one. Um, and I don't remember if we discussed this last time, ladies and gentlemen, um, if we did, I apologize, but I, I, there's a little bit more that I, that I have to say about this now that I've actually played the game. So to unlock games two, three, and four, you actually have to play a multiplayer match, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, that's like maybe five minutes of your life. You know, if even that you get in and get out, like if all you really have to do is play one game. Okay. I have absolutely no interest in it, man. I've never liked gears multiplayer. Um, I like horde over the multiplayer infinitely better, you know, just playing with some buddies. Never been my thing, but okay, fine. I have to play this one stupid multiplayer to placate fucking Cliff Blazinski's testicles, whatever. So, um, I do that, and uh, you do get an achievement, actually, for, for doing that. And what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to unlock games 2, 3, and 4. Here's what they didn't fucking tell you about this, and this has me on fire with nerd rage. Like, this is the biggest bunch of crap 
Nerd alert. Yeah, nerd, nerd alert. alert. I'm going to fucking <laughs> just, just fuck you in your nerd ear pussy. I mean, it's like, yeah, like, oh, this is bullshit. Like, I seriously feel fucking ripped off after I heard this. Okay, two things, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, so even though I played my multiplayer game, I did it with a buddy. He had no desire to play it either. We just like, let's unlock games two, three, and four, whatever. We can play Horde. It doesn't unlock until this fall, probably next month-ish, maybe November, somewhere around there. What? No. So we don't even get to play it yet. We went through the fucking trouble of doing that. That's that's why they gave you to the end of the year, because if you played it now, you don't get shit. That's, that's, that's a fucking ruse. So fuck you, Cliff. Go, you know, I'm, I'm tired of paying for your stupid fucking hair bleach. <sighs> um, secondly, and here's the big thing that they didn't tell you, and this, I feel, was a goddamn con. At that same time that these things are going to be made available to those those of us who bought the Ultimate Edition of Gears of War, all four games are becoming 100% backwards compatible for the Xbox One. So, games 2, 3, and 4 are not upscaled. They're not re They only did that for the first game. So, literally, at the same time that I could do this, I could take the games pop them in my Xbox One, and be ready to go without an install, without taking up the incredibly fucking tiny hard drive that they have in that thing, and I already have the games. I don't want to download anything if I've already got the games. As long as it's running fine, I have absolutely no desire to do that. And on top of that, that alone takes away a selling point of this because it's like you're not getting the box set anymore if they're just making it available to everyone. It's like, what the fuck did I just pay you for? Like, right. oh, you paid for the revised version of Gears of War 1. Okay, guys, I'm going to be very brutally honest here, and this is not because I am pissed off at this whole 2, 3, and 4 thing. Honestly, this is completely separate. This is based on a conversation I was having with my buddy Ray Weil, co-host of Dirt Flicks. Check us out on YouTube, please. It's an awesome show. If you like shitty movies, watch us. Um, it's, okay. So the game's polished. It runs better than it ever has. I'm not going to detract from that one single bit. I'll be honest with you guys. I was fucking bored playing this game. This game did not age well at all. Like, you know, it's nice that they upgraded the graphics and stuff like that, and that's cool, and that, that it helped, like, soften the blow a little bit. But, guys, when you compare it to games 2 and especially games 3, this is not the best Gears game. It's not even close. Like, it's not like the original Halo where... Um, you know, they redid it, you know, the Halo Collector's Edition, everything like that. That is still fun. That is still my favorite Halo game to play. I love that infinitely better than 2, 3, and 4. Um, you know, all they did was spit polish it, you know, do the graphics and stuff like that, increase the frame rate, and it looks like a million bucks. But it, at the core, it is still Halo. They didn't change anything. As a matter of fact, um, the guys who took over 343 had to go in and break the code so that all the exploits in the original Halo game were present in the Collector's Edition. So it's legitimately the exact game with a different graphics engine. So we have the same thing here with Gears of War, and guys, maybe it's just me, and this is honestly not because of the 2, 3, and 4 rage. Honestly not. I wanted to sit down and play the game and like it. I was honestly fucking bored. I was just like, I don't want to play this anymore. I don't. Like, we got, like, a couple chapters in. I'm like, I have no desire to play this. Let's go play, let's go play Payday. I just, I mean, even at the, what did I pay? Like 30 something dollars, you know, with the Best Buy Gamers Club thing. <sighs> I'm not going to say that I absolutely, like if I could, you know, fire up the flux capacitor, jump into Lauren and go back in time and stop myself from doing it. I can't say <laughs> implicitly that I would, but I can say that I would probably make myself think about it. Like, is this really worth it? At this point, I'd have to say no. I mean, they're, they're oh, not wow. really, they're not really offering anything new. Like, yeah, you get like a better version of the first game and yeah, you can download games two, three, and four in case you don't already have them. But to guys like me and Tyler, who probably still have the games, we don't give a shit about that. We still have the games, so we don't care. And even if it wasn't, you know, forwards compatible on the Xbox one or backwards compatible, whatever, we could go back to the 360 and still play it because the servers are still running. However, there is one thing about that that they are doing correctly. So I've just took a giant steaming fucking chili shit on them. I'm going to give them props for doing one thing correctly. I don't know if this is just coincidence and laziness or if they're actually being forward thinking about this, but either way, I will give them credit. When you're playing on the Xbox One, no matter what version you're playing with, whether it's the disc or whether it's the unlocked copy, you can play with your buddies who are playing on 360. 
So it's cross-platform oh, cool. compatible. If you want to do Horde or multiplayer or whatever, you're connecting to the 360 servers. So I don't know if that's simply laziness, meaning they didn't want to set up a new server farm for the X-Bone, or if they were just like, let's not alienate people. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on this one. Since I just took a big shit on them, I'm be like, all right, maybe they're trying to be nice, not alienate people, bring people in, because we all know that's what this whole backwards compatible thing is about. They're trying to roll people in like, guys, come on, like, give us a shot. And that's cool. So I have some friends who don't yet have an Xbox One who have Gears of War 3 and want to play with me. Great. You know, that that's cool. So... Tyler, um, I hope I have not completely ruined your Gears of War Ultimate experience. Um, <laughs> this is merely my opinion, man. I just, I honestly want you to play it before the next podcast. Throw it in, go through like a chapter or two, and I want you to give us, this is your homework, I want you to give us a report as far as what you think. Did it age well? Do you still enjoy it? You know, I honestly want to hear what you think. Maybe it's just me. All right. So... You know, and there was also some other drama this week with um, oh, Metal Gear Solid. Um, yeah, here we go. I was, Bank. I was waiting for this. Yeah, and basically, you know, I guess part of it, the multiplayer is unlocked, you know, ready to go. And then there's like another part of the game, which, you know, you, I guess you actually have to pay to speed up your progress. But from the sound of it, what I was reading about it and just hearing some other people talk about it, it sounds almost like it's a mobile game. What the fuck? On, on like, um, um, uh, you know, I mean, basically it has the depth of like a mobile game, but yet, you know, it's on the, the disc. So, um, it has a lot of microtransactions in it. And I think, you know, this is what, Konami, you know, is basically wanting to move to, and I, I wonder personally if maybe that was the reason that Kojima left Konami maybe. was because he didn't want. Because I've read articles, you know, basically where he didn't really like microtransactions, and he didn't really, you know, find a purpose of them in a game, especially when you're paying full price. And let's let's face it, guys. Konami has milked the shit out of this game. They released a you know a game that could be beaten like ten minutes. What well, what was the first? You know I'm not up with my Metal Gear, but um, you remember about six or six months or a year ago? You know they released part of this game, mm -hmm. and it was like a demo, a glorified demo. But people were beating it in like ten minutes. And it's, it's all fucking movie, dude. Like that fiasco yeah. with Sons of the Patriots or Guns of the Patriots, whatever it's called, where it's there's like fucking two hours of movie. Like there's more and, movie than gameplay. And I know a lot of people really love the Metal Gear series, right. but like it's very intimidating for somebody who does not know what's going on to break into that right. series. And you've got to play a shit ton of games, you know, to get into the story. And that's one of the reasons that's really, you know, kept me from playing it because, you know, I've, I've got to go back to the PlayStation and play, you know, Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. And then I've got to work my way up. And I, I just can't jump in, like, right at the end. And I picked up um, I picked up Metal Gear Solid Sons of the Patriots here. Um, I want to say last week I got for, like, four or five bucks. And, you know, I've, I've got the games. Mm hmm I'm just waiting for a time where I can, you know, sit down and play it. And it's not going to be anytime soon, but, um, I don't know. Like I, that, that series though, like to me, I, I think they're ruining it for future, um, games. If they start doing all this microtransactions in the games and I don't know if they'll ever even do another one with Kojima, you know, gone. And I mean, you know, that's, that's something totally different altogether. But um, I, I just, I, I really worry about, you know, the future of Konami with some of this stuff, you know, that's this going on with some of their games. And I really can't blame Kojima for leaving at all. No. But, um, I, you know, aside from all that, the game is getting incredible reviews. I mean, it's getting like 10 out of 10 and all that. So, you know, I'm going to play it one day. It's just, you know, whenever I can break into the series. But, you know, it's not really accessible for people who, you know, haven't been keeping up with the series thus far, you know. Right. Which is, I mean, you haven't been keeping up with it either, have you? 
Dude, the last yeah. Metal Gear Solid game I played was the first one on the PlayStation. I played it for like 30 minutes, and I was like, I'm bored to fucking tears. It's like, I am I know that this is some people's Halo, it's some people's Gears of War, and they just fucking worship it and shit. Just not my thing, guys. It's just not my deal. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a you like... Guy. Yeah, either yeah. you like stealth games or certain types of stealth games, but Splinter yeah. Cell's another good good series. I guess that's, I like that. you know... Um, that's been, I guess hand, that's, that's been handled a little bit better. Yeah, but I mean, are they? I wonder if they doing any more of those. Oh, you know they are, dude. Ubisoft's not going to let that go, especially with the the Assassin's Creed fiasco, because um, they essentially the last um, Splinter Cell game has effectively rebooted the series because Sam Fisher was a little bit younger, so they started yeah. over. There's a new guy doing the voice and everything, which. Saying I, to that, I, I, I did not like. No, I did I like, not like. I like the... Michael Ironside. He's the voice of Sam Fisher. End of discussion. Yeah. You know, right, it's it's like the animated Joker not being voiced by Mark Hamill. It's just not the same thing, and I'm I've got sure the... he would keep doing it forever. Oh yeah, he says I mean, he loves doing it. So, and who wouldn't love getting paid just to not even have to act? I mean, he's oh, got, I guess he's got the cool. I guess it's voice, a form man. of acting, but he's just got this like fucking absolutely razor oh, yeah. sharp voice, man. That's like there's no one else who could sound that cool. So, okay, I so... got that. I got that version of um, Splinter Cell, the last one that came out, that yeah. came with the airplane. Oh, nice. It, it has, like, two motors on either side. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'd am i never broke it out of the box to actually fly it. Nice. But I've, I've got to find a good, like, open field because I don't want to destroy it, you know, the first time I take it out to fly it. But I, I I've seen some videos carefully. online, and it, it looks like it flies really well. I would try carefully. All right, so... So we started off with kind of a bad, you know, uh, a kind of game update report here. So I'm, I'm going to inject a little bit of good here. And I, I think I might, I, I'm hoping that this doesn't end our friendship, Tyler. I'm hoping this doesn't end the fucking podcast because, dude, uh -oh. I'm about to inject some some jelly on you, man. We're, we're, we're going to get like some grape strawberry level jelly here where <laughs> I know that you collect for the system. We're both pretty much geeks for this. And I've, I've got some of the harder to find stuff here. I'm really hoping you don't have either of these because that's now that I've hyped it, that's going to completely fucking deflate me. So I'm going to roll the dice here, and I'm just going to assume that you don't have either of these. But been after these for a while. Oh, nice! Superstar Soldier for the turbo. Nice, game. complete in the case. Nice minty label and everything does work just fine. I was actually playing it earlier. Um, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you not in the know, for those of you who do not collect for the TurboGrafx-16, in my personal opinion, and I'm sure there's a lot of Turbo Geeks out there who would agree with this, it is basically the ultimate console for shooters. Nothing even comes close as far as the consistency and the number of shooters. Side-scrollers, top-downs, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo combined don't even come close to this. So, in that capacity, and they were just cranking those games out, it excels. Um, I think I've maybe played one or two eh, okay ones. Not bad, but just eh, okay. The majority of the ones you play are fucking awesome. So I've been after Super Star Soldier here, which is part two of the trilogy. First would be Star Soldier, this one, and the final one, which is Soldier Blade, um, which is a very, very expensive uh, Hue card game. Um, I have played it, actually, in a tournament, and I won, by the way. Um, never playing it before. Came in first place. Fuck yeah. So <laughs> that was kind of awesome. No, dude, Starland, they were holding a, a tournament, and I, I finally heard they were doing a Turbo Graphics tournament. I was like, there's no way I'm not entering that. Like, they finally do something in my wheelhouse. Sat down, smoked them, grabbed my prize like a boss. Shooters are kind of my thing. So that's one thing. The other thing, um, I've been after this one for quite a while. I wish it was the sequel to this because everyone wants that game. But this is the first part in the series. Um, I kind of wheeled and dealed on this one a little bit. Uh, just... I'm not going to say lied or con, just kind of left out critical information to give me a little bit of an edge in the negotiation. Um, so this game actually came uh, originally with the Turbo Duo system as a three-part uh, CD-ROM, where you got three Turbo Chip games basically on one CD. And it actually came uh, with all three manuals for each of the respective games since it had been previously released. And uh, the game in question actually came with one of the manuals that 
is not the game that I was buying it for. It came with uh, Bonk's Adventure and Bonk's Revenge in the third game, which you'll see in a second. So it didn't come with the third game's manual, and that would be the rarest of the three games. Bonk's Adventure and Bonk's Revenge are actually semi-common. You can get those any day of the week on eBay. And I actually use that in my as my advantage to negotiate with the seller, saying, you know, it doesn't have this manual, and, you know, finding that by itself is actually going to cost a pretty penny. Which is true. You know, that that's not a lie. That's not a ruse. What I didn't tell him is I already have the manual. I've been saving it for a rainy day. I just got it in a deal with a bunch of other manuals, and I was like, you know, I might need this one day, and it's cheap enough. I think I paid $10 for the manual. Nice. Gate of Gate fucking of thunder. thunder and rock and roll. Oh, you know, it's like, I wish it was Lords of Thunder, guys, because I, I, that is the one game on the Turbo Graphics other than Bonk 3 that I've been waiting to play like my entire life. It has the best soundtrack. Everyone who loves it, loves the Turbo Graphics, say Lords of Thunder is the greatest shooter, like, ever. Like, period. Let alone the one on the console. But I'm still after that one, man. I'm going to get Lords of Thunder. I'm just waiting for the price to. I don't know. I've seen it go for over $200 as of late, which is ridiculous. It was like 125 at the start of the summer. So um, I need to get my Turbo Duo fixed since my CD laser is a little bit effed up. But I'm going to leave that to the Wizards at East Starland to resolve that. I cannot wait to play this. I really can't. Dude. I'm like foaming at the mouth there. So, all right. Do you have other of these games, Tyler? I don't. Yes. I don't. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Are you, but, are, you, are you a little jelly? Well, I'm a little bit jelly. Yeah. All right. Mission but, accomplished. But. All right, so we're now we're going off on this collecting uh, binge here. Yes, we are. All right. Well, this week I was like sitting here looking on eBay, and I'm sitting there thinking like, all right, you know, the new Star Wars is coming out this Christmas, right? Yep. So now is probably the time to go out and get those um, Star Wars games that. I need to kind of complete my Star Wars collection sure. on video game systems. So I went out, and before the prices go up, I yep. picked up Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, mm -hmm. and Super Return of the Jedi, all, all complete in box. And guys, like, now is the time, for real. Like, before the prices go up, because you can believe that every time, like, a movie like this comes out... Mm -hmm. The prices on Star Wars shit is going to go sky high. Yep. So now's the time to pick them up. I picked up each one probably for like 25 bucks each, complete in box. Good deal. So, I mean, they're not hard to find, but they're starting to get harder to find. So um, now's the time to pick those up. Also, I went to the Xbox, original Xbox, mm -hmm. and I picked up um, Jedi Academy. Which um, I, I traded that in a while back. That supposedly is a harder to find game, and I don't know. Like some rarity gods and stuff say that's a rare game, but you can pick it up all day for under twenty bucks. And um, so I picked up that. And I picked up Battlefront One and Two. Nice for my Xbox. So this was week of Star Wars, and Sounds then like to. Uh, kind of coincide with your shooter tinge you went on right there. I picked up uh, Gunbird 2 for mm. um, the Dreamcast, and I've been playing a lot of that this week. Um, that is a pretty rare um, shooter for the Sega Dreamcast, and um, I actually got it um, sealed. Wow. Uh, yeah, and there was like one seller online from like Seoul, South Korea that had it brand new sealed and it was like half the price of anybody else. Wow. So I actually had that shipped in. It, it arrived this week and um, it's been a long time since I played that game. But i um, been having a ton of fun playing that. So, I bet. Um, so that, that was a couple of my pickups this week from uh, older school systems. Awesome. But nothing, nothing really rare other than um, Gunbird, I'd say. Awesome, man. Good scores. It's been, yeah, it's been a good week. You know, one thing, you're not going to find a whole lot of just super rare games on the Sega Dreamcast, mm -hmm. but for some reason, 
Capcom games are ridiculously expensive. Well, absolutely. You're going to pay a ton of money for uh, Gunbird 2. You're going to pay a lot for Giga Wing 2. Uh, the first Giga Wing is, is not that bad. Uh, it's a lot more common, but um, Cannon Spike. Project Justice. Yeah, Power Stone. Yeah. I mean, Street Power Fighter. Stone 2. Yeah. So, um, you know, before the Dreamcast market goes crazy, like, I would highly recommend picking up some of those games before they just get ridiculous. And speaking of Dreamcast, I would just like to give a shout out to the Dreamcast. It's was its anniversary this week. So hey, did you do a video on that? I did. I did. You can check it out on my channel, Shameless Plug. <laughs> <laughs> we are such but, horrors. Oh my god. I know we're we're selling ourselves out for Cheap. plug. But no, I mean for real though, like it really um that that honestly and I you know said this on my video mm -hmm. that I did but um the Dreamcast is a really special system to me um for those of you those of you who didn't see it mm -hmm. um actually um when that system came out right around that time uh, my ha my house burned down and um we lost pretty much everything um half the house burned down the rest of it was just complete smoke damage and I lost, you know, all my childhood gaming systems, uh, Nintendo, my um, Nintendo 64, and I was I was a collector even back then. My Game Boy and all the boxes, um, I I kept all my boxes, my manuals, everything. I wasn't, you know, the kid that just had the cartridges. I had all my boxes and everything. But anyways, I lost all that, and you know, I told my parents if. You know, I could have one thing, um, you know, from when the insurance money came in, I would love to have a Sega Dreamcast. And it really helped me get through a lot of the, um, you know, hard times. Because um, it was really, you know, kind of stressful going from, you know, living at our own house to moving in with our grandparents. The house was crowded. So it was kind of an, an escape, uh, you know, if you will, for a while. And, um I had so many fond memories from that system. It introduced me to some of my favorite gaming franchises. Uh, Resident Evil, um, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. Uh, it's the first time I ever played this. And, you know, it was honestly just a really a, a cut above everything else that was out at that time. It was sure. putting out, you know, great arcade perfect ports of g games like Crazy Taxi. Mm -hmm. And, um... Soul Calibur. I mean, just you can go on and on. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I mean, there's Marvel vs. Capcom. I mean, there's a ton of, of great games that you could play at home that were basically just as good, if not better, in some cases, than what you were seeing in the arcade. And, um, you know, so it, it definitely, um, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for that system. It, it's prob probably, you know, arguably my favorite system of all time. Um, and, um, you know, that and the Genesis said are the systems that really, you know, solidified me in as a Sega fanboy back in the day. So, so you have last processing. That's right. See, That's... we told you <laughs> it's all coming from Tyler. So, um, while we're on the subject of gaming, uh, I have a, just a little report, uh, for you guys. Um, since we had mentioned this on the last podcast, uh, that, uh, YouTube live game streaming was just kind of starting to get its legs. And um, there's a couple things that I need to correct, actually. Um, I don't know if this was simply the case and we were just too stupid to notice it, or if YouTube actually rectified this. But um, we had mentioned last time that uh, the there was basically account separation between uh, YouTube live game streaming and your YouTube account. Well, there is a simple way to get around that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you do want to create a completely separate account specifically through the YouTube live game streaming uh, website, which is separate from YouTube, you can do so. Uh, but if you're using software uh, like I am, I use XSplit uh, Gaming for my broadcast on Retro Game Lounge <clears throat> Live. Um, it basically ties into your existing YouTube account, so it uploads straight to it live the same way that Google Plus did. So basically the same way that I do one of my shows, Dirt Flicks, uh, via Google+, um, it's the exact same thing. 
Um, there are a couple complaints that I do have with it. Uh, the mer it's I'm not sure if this is on YouTube's end or on XSplit's end. I think probably a probably a little bit of both. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, to see the chat, um, and I know that XSplit does have this through Twitch. You can incorporate a window. Uh, so that you can see, and I understand YouTube is new, so we got to give them a little bit of slack on this. But uh, to see the chat, I actually have to run a separate browser window just to see what everyone is saying um, while I'm running the game. So I can't incorporate it into the actual program like you could with, say, Twitch. Um, that will, I, I would guess, would eventually be rectified since chat is such a big deal. And I'm sure that YouTube and XSplit will get together and figure out a way to incorporate it. So not a really huge deal. Um, it's just kind of a pin in the butt, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, I will say this though, uh, XSplit, you know, the, the software that I use, uh, make sure that you've got your computer up to snuff because this thing eats resources. Um, you don't have to have like an Alienware or anything like that to be able to run this, but you definitely need a good, speedy and healthy graphics card uh, to be able to do this. I would not recommend doing it for anything that's less than two gigabytes, maybe DDR5, something with a good fan on it, a lot of speed. Um, because you're you're going to need it uh, to be able to handle this kind of thing, especially if you're going to run a webcam, because that's that's a lot of rendering that it all has to do. I render all of mine on my graphics card, so it takes the heat off the CPU. Um, unless you've got a really badass CPU, and the one I've got in here, it's it's a high-end Athlon with eight cores, so it's it's pretty healthy. But my graphics card is simply a little bit faster at this. So if you're going to try this, guys, and you got a fat graphics card like I do, run it on the graphics card. It seems to be able to run just a little bit better. Um, that being said, though, criticisms aside, uh, it runs incredibly smoothly. Um, I was able, we kind of started with baby steps. Um, I started running it originally at 360, then we tried it again at 480, just doing tests, and I was eventually able to run it at 720, um, both on the camera and in the game, and it ran like a freaking top. Um, the frame rate was nice and smooth on both the game and the camera. We had very, very little lag, if anything else. Um, you know, obviously, other than the simple broadcast lag, meaning when we're running the window and we're actually uh, seeing ourselves, there's probably 10 seconds or so worth of delay, but you know, that, there's not much they can do about that. But um, all things considered, guys, I'm um, considering how new this is. They're doing a pretty good job with this. It's really simple to use if you're going to do it through your software. Um, you, If you have an Elgato capture device like I do, you can actually run it straight through that. The latest revision of the software incorporates YouTube gaming. However, there is one small problem with it. It will not let you run a webcam. So Elgato, if you're listening, yeah, right. Um, incorporate a freaking webcam. Give us the option to run a separate video feed. Um, that, that would definitely be a way to, for Elgato to rope in more customers uh, to use their products and their software. Um, that being said, guys, um, I haven't really found anything else to nitpick about it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, this has been what I have wanted to do with my original retro gaming show, Retro Game uh, Lounge. Uh, the, you know, the whole reason, the whole uh, doorway that I got started through this community on YouTube. I originally wanted to do this as a live show. Um, I hated the fact that we had to pre-record it, although that does offer some advantages. I always wanted it to be like an interaction, like a television show with the audience. You know, if we could do it in front of a live audience, that would be ideal. And this gives me the way to do that. And that being said, it, it's awesome. Uh, for those of you who haven't chimed in, we've only done one game so far in three parts and failed fucking miserably completing the game last time, uh, which would be <laughs> Double Dragon Neon. But um, Chuck and I will be back, guys. We will be finishing that um, in the very near future. There's a lot of other games that I want to play. Uh, for any of you who've actually used this, if you have an Elgato and you have a Retron 5, uh, leave me a comment. Um, I actually have a couple questions for you as we're having a little bit of trouble getting it to cooperate. Um, as far as running on the separate game monitor, it's, it seems to be some kind of funky with the resol the, something weird with the resolution where what the Retron 5 outputs is just odd, I guess you could say, for some LCD televisions. I've got a couple workarounds I'm going to try, but seriously, guys, if any of you have tried this, leave us a comment um, because I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm sure it's probably something stupid that I'm missing. But um, again, all things considered, um, YouTube live game streaming, guys, check it out. Um, if you've got the capability to do it, it's a lot of fun. I know YouTube uh, gameplay videos are really, really popular. It's one of the biggest things to do on YouTube. And YouTube is definitely giving Twitch a run for their money. Um, as far as consistency and everything, yeah, I, I think Twitch is probably going to see a little bit of hurt in, in their uh, their viewer base. So that's my two cents. Thank you. So um, speaking to the Retron 5, have you seen the video going around of um, when you pop in a certain Sega Genesis game, it, it throws a little shade? Shaq on Fu. you for 
Yeah, have you seen I've that? I've heard about that. Yeah, playing, a, what is playing this, what is it this classic right here. What is, it says, what does it, say? it pops up like a um, little uh, frowny face, and it's like, are you sure there's not a better game you can play? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and anyways, and then it'll um, load it after, and you can play like, yeah, I'm sure I want to play this game or nice. something. <laughs> So I thought that was pretty pretty funny. They programmed that into the, that's the awesome. uh, system. Yeah, it is a pretty shitty game. So. That's a that's a neat little Easter egg. Yeah. But you know, I remember playing that over at my friend Jason's house when I was younger, and for some reason, like we, I, he owned it, and we actually got some some playing time out of that game. And I don't remember it being just horrible, horrible back then. I, I've played some worse games than Shaq Fu for sure, but. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as of course, as a fighting game, I mean, it, it's probably it's one of the worst good. ones out there. But it's not good. It has it has some humor to it, just the horrible, horrible cutscenes and stuff. Oh god, <laughs> fuck that game. Bro. Oh man, but yeah, um, speaking to um, doing like let's plays and whatnot, mm-hmm. I saw that um, YouTube was or Nintendo via YouTube was actually. Um, putting copyright strikes on people for um, playing, I, I guess it was like ROM hack games and doing speed runs. They were what putting the fuck? copyright claims on their videos. I'm like... How can you put a copyright claim on a ROM hack? Or, or a speed run for that. I mean, like, I, I just don't understand that with Nintendo. You've got free advertisement. Shelf free advertisement for your game like people are saying like hey i'm playing your game if anything that should like make people go man that looks really fun i want to go out and get that game at the store i mean that is grassroots advertisement for nintendo why are you putting copyright strikes on it i I can see if maybe the music or something is setting off a copyright strike or whatnot, then, you know, people could turn down the volume of the game and they could play, you know, whatever music that's allowed by YouTube maybe over it, but I don't know. I just don't get that. Nintendo needs to knock this shit off. Like, that... I It, it's, it has to do with Nintendo being an incredibly <laughs> Japanese company, and they have very, very old-school Japanese business practices, but let's be honest here, guys. Nintendo also has a completely separate wing in America run by Reggie Filzami who absolutely could step in with one fucking email and fix this because in America he runs the show like this is Nintendo is his fucking company so he could he, he could basically fix this with one stroke of the brush and say you know we're not going to bother you guys anymore like don't worry about this it's it just really blows my mind that Nintendo, who isn't starved for money at all, they're a highly successful company, and they have, I think without question, the most loyal fan base of any of the video game systems, either past or present. I mean, Nintendo fans are like Disney fans, dude. They are fucking diehard. I mean, they are just loyal disciples of the big N. Why, as a company, when you're making money and you're so far into the black... Why would you try and alienate that core demographic of people who is basically keeping your company afloat? And when you alienate the quote-unquote casual gamers, these people are going to be all that's left. You know, these people are going to be the people fucking slaving, you know, rowing the ship and shit. So it's, that's something that I've never understood about Nintendo. It's just like they fail to grasp really who they are. They're so disconnected from the way that the average Nintendo fan like you or I, for example, sees them. You know, as this beloved Disney-like company in video game with arguably the most recognizable franchises that probably will ever exist in video game history. I mean, they've got the Mickey Mouse, they have the Donald Duck, you know, they have Goofy and shit. They have all their respective characters um, that are recognized the world over. I mean, who doesn't know what Mario is? It's up there with probably Jesus Christ and Santa Claus and Mickey Mouse as far as, you know, recognize. So, Nintendo, seriously... Cut this fucking bullshit out. Like, we're not taking money out of your pocket. No one is getting rich off of doing freaking speedruns. So let's say you're losing 20 bucks. So what? 
Like the amount of advertising, like Tyler said, that you're getting out of this should be like a hundredfold better than that because it's getting people enthusiastic about the games and about the brands. Why fuck with right. that, man? Like, why piss off your freaking loyal customers? Stop that shit. Come on, Reggie. Quit dicking around trying to be fucking cool and actually be cool. Asshole. Yeah, I'm I'm just not I'm not a fan of that. I, you know, I'm like you. I think that it's just ridiculous and they need to stop that because they are alienating their their fan base for sure. But That's no question. On the flip side of things, they had a pretty good week. We um we saw the release of uh Super Mario Maker. Mhm. I haven't played and that yet. How how is it? I I haven't had a chance to either. Um I picked what it up fuck? last night, so I can't really comment to it, but I will say uh, it was really cool because it came with a nice little um, coffee table book, nice. Mario coffee table book, and it's uh, got some really nice artwork and stuff in it. Um, you know, definitely something they didn't have to you know include with the game, but it was a nice little touch for that. And uh, Jimbo, what's up, man? Got a got a confession, uh -oh. buddy. Are you ready to hear my confession? Oh shit. It happened again. What happened again? More. <laughs> they released oh, more man. feedbacks. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs> yeah, damn we. It. So we got more amiibos. So I had to pick up the Ganondorf uh, amiibo, and to me, I, I know you're not into the amiibos mm. or amiibers, as some people call them. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> but this Ganondorf one looks so badass. This is a sweet little statue of Ganondorf. Um, one of the most detailed amiibos that I've seen so far. And then, Jimbo, I think even you could get behind this one. This is the 30th anniversary Mario one that's kind of the pixelated right, that version cool. of Mario. That one's kind of cool. That, that's pretty badass right there. And so I picked up those two, and of course I had to pick up Zero Suit Samus oh, because, God. you know, I'm, I'm a Metroid fan. I mean, for the love of God, I gotta oh, gotta pick it up. God. So, uh, uh. so yeah, the amiibo bug struck me again, and of course the lady working at GameStop's like, "Oh, you don't want these other ones?" I was like, "Nah." I was like, I, "I've got to cut it off somewhere." It's like I only collect Zelda stuff and Metroid stuff. I was like, "But." That Mario one, I've got to pick it up just because how cool it looks. But how much were those? Uh, like eleven ninety nine maybe each. That's less than I thought it was. So, I, I, yeah, they're they're not quite as bad, but yeah, like Nintendo is taking my money left and right. I just Ooh, saw yeah. where the world of Nintendo has all these exclusive figures. I guess you can uh -huh. only get at World of Nintendo, and they've got a Metroid actual metroid um that you know you can get and it's a pretty nice size little figure and uh, i think another uh samus version of her in her suit so that's more money they're gonna get out of my pocket but they're not amiibo so don't judge me don't you judge me call me when they do bomber man because <laughs> i'm gonna go into it for just those and that's gonna be the end of it that's I honestly can't think of anything else that I would want, like amiibo related. Like it's, hmm. they've got a Sonic one that I might pick up, but I mean for the most part, you know, the ones I've got are I mean, I've got all the ones I want. So, um, I know there's one that comes like the latest Mario Party, yeah, the Mario version, and you know when I pick up that game, it might. That might be one I just get happen to get because it comes with the box version of it. So yeah, you and me both, man. But so yeah, uh, you'd be disappointed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know that you listeners out there can't see it, but like the look on my face on that was probably just like it just, was disgust, just discontent, just like fuck this bullshit, fuck this fucking noise. God damn it. Like, especially, like, when Nintendo's misbehaving with this copyright strike shit. Like, I'll give them money for the video games, because I get something out of that. But the fucking Amiibo crap, no. It's something to sit on the damn shelf. That's it. Yep. That's all it is. It's I shelf mean, game. Look around. So, <laughs> I think I've got it. I've got enough. 
If that's not the pot calling the kettle black. I know. I'm a bastard. What can I say? But um, So there's a couple things uh, in movie news that I wanted to touch on today. Uh, one of them that's kind of sort of related uh, to a previous topic uh, that Tyler and I covered with the whole um, uh, Ghostbusters reboot and it being all female and all that crap. And Tyler and I both seem to agree that that was just a bunch of bullshit. And, you know, don't, don't remake a perfect movie. And Ghostbusters is a fucking perfect movie. It's just that simple. So, um, there is another remake in the works um, that's kind of getting this exact same type of treatment. Uh, but it's not a very good movie, so that's okay. Like, it's an okay, fun movie, but it's not a, It's not Ghostbusters, uh, so let's, let's be honest. Uh, well, it's not Ghostbusters. It's not but, Ghostbusters. So you're going to meet some opposition here on my end, because... I'd say that this movie is a fucking 80s classic. No, oh, it is. It is. Like, okay. it's, it's right. a little bit, right. a little campy unintentionally. Oh, like, yeah, it's not, of course. As long as you don't take it seriously, it's okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ghostbusters. It's, it's definitely usually, like a guilty, it's a guilty pleasure. Oh, and, dude, there's a reason it's on TBS probably at any, like, you could, it's probably at least once a day it's on TBS or TNT. There's a fucking reason <laughs> right. for that shit. So, as long as you take it in that particular uh, capacity, then it's fine. But Ghostbusters, you could take it in that capacity. You could take it as a serious film, and it holds up either way. Like it's, it, it's a fucking movie that's still a good movie. Like the production value is good. It's not really that cheesy. You know, it's supposed to be funny. You know, Roadhouse right. wasn't supposed to be funny, but it actually is. And don't get me wrong, dude, I love me some Roadhouse. So they're remaking Roadhouse, ladies and gentlemen. Um, bringing up to speed. <laughs> And they're switching the gender. Um, I don't know if the character is still going to be called Dalton. I guess you could because it's a last name. Uh, and Ronda Rousey actually has been signed on to play the lead role of the cooler, you know, taking over for Patrick Swayze. I have absolutely no problem with this because it's not a great movie, like meaning you could do it again and you could probably do it better. Like it would, I mean, it won't be as cherished and it won't be as classic and it won't be as campy or anything like that, but you could put her in this and do a serious freaking movie and it might actually be a good movie. Like that has potential because it wasn't a fucking amazing movie. It was just, you know, it was an okay movie. So, and on top of that, guys, what's, what's her name? Melissa McCarthy and, and the rest of those fucking morons in, in, in the Ghostbusters. Do I believe that any of them could for fucking one second be a phd scientist from nyu no oh that that is exactly what i was about to say how no. ridiculous i mean dude what, what who, who plot, else is in this wait. fucking paris hilton the nuclear physicist like what the fuck no i don't believe for <laughs> one second that any of them could be that smart no like whether or not you think they're funny okay fine they're fucking funny. Dude, Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville from Jackass are funny. That doesn't mean they're fucking rogue scholars. So it's... No. But... How how pissed off would you be if... With this Roadhouse remake... Yeah. They announced that Melissa McCarthy was playing... Like the town baddie. <laughs> if they do that... We're gonna do an update to this podcast... Where I take a big steaming shit on this. Like just like Melissa McCarthy, thank you. You're you're pretty much solely responsible for bringing down everything awesome in Hollywood. It's you and Seth Rogen right. fucking everything up. So okay, so while all the Ghostbusters chicks, there's no fucking way that I'm gonna buy that any of them are scientists. I'm sorry, no, it's not happening. Would I believe that Ronda Rousey's a bouncer? Absolutely. And I'm not even talking about like a girl bouncer. I'm talking about a bouncer bouncer. Because this chick can legitimately kick most dudes' asses. I mean, she is a no-bullshit fighter. Like, she doesn't take yeah. crap from anyone. Like, she's bored fighting women. She wants to fight guys. You know, she's challenged Floyd Mayweather to a fight. And if he, of course, is being Money Mayweather and saying, you know, call me when you make $300 million. And she's like, I make more than you per second. You know, you have to fight for two hours to get paid. I have to fight for less than 30 seconds. She does have a point there. She is making money faster than Mayweather is. But I think that, seriously, I think Floyd she fights, be awesome. fights women for free. Oh, yeah, he that's true. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well he played, sir. To. He's like, wait a minute. You mean I can get paid to do this? Like, he should be right. jumping all over that shit. Like, I was going to do that I, shit anyway. For this. Money Mayweather, like a motherfucker. So, it, I honestly, guys, 
I like Ronda Rousey. Um, she was one of the few parts of Expendables 3 that I actually enjoyed. Um, did not enjoy that movie nearly as much as Part 1 and Part 2, but she was really cool. You know, she does, does all her own stunts. Her fight scenes were fucking awesome, and it was like the lady killer in the fucking flesh doing her thing. I can't wait to see the scenes where some fucking big pumped up jock, you know, comes up to the freaking door and she's like, you know, IDs, please. And whatever they try and give her shit. And she just lays their asses out, you know, I mean, cause dude, it's Ronda Rousey. Like she's the closest thing to the real life wonder woman that we're probably ever going to get. I just wonder, can she act? And I think so. I think, I think she's, I, just, I, I she's don't know. Stupid. I mean, she's, she's very, I've heard some interviews and watch some interviews that she's been in and she just she doesn't seem to show a lot of emotion you know i mean she's she is a bouncer yeah she's playing a bouncer but, so but you know one thing that I always me and my buddies always we all love roadhouse but uh one thing we always found ridiculous about dalton in the movie was he was this legendary bouncer if there's such a thing ever and he's been heard of all over the United States. People from people from bars, you know, want him to come run their bar, you know, and turn it into this money maker or whatever. And he has a degree in philosophy yeah. from NYU. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> and he and he's like a black belt in, in karate. But I, <laughs> that is the most ridiculous concept of a movie, but it definitely is like a guilty pleasure. Oh, like absolutely. If, you, if you've never seen Roadhouse, like you can pick it up for probably five to eight dollars on Blu-ray. I think that's. And I think you're overshooting. <laughs> all right, wait Less till Black $5. Friday. <laughs> wait till Black Friday, and you can pick it up for ninety nine. You cents could probably pick it up for free. Uh, but no, right. seriously, guys, I'll it's a good movie. You. <laughs> it's yeah. next to Dirty Dancing. It's probably Patrick Swayze's most famous movie. You know, and Ghost. I, yes. I, I, oh yeah, and Ghost. But I mean, like, as far as like Patrick Swayze being Patrick Swayze, you know, when he was at the prime of his career, yeah. I mean, it's it's Roadhouse. And it was and about. it was pretty fucking ripped for this movie. Too. No, he was, dude. He's his mom is a world famous uh, dance instructor, so he's was from a small child. He's a trained classical and ballet dancer, so. The dude, is basically, I yeah, his, um, I forget his mom's name. Obviously it's not Swayze, but, um, his mom is, she's like up there with Doris Day, like as far as the, the fame she has of being a ballet and dance instructor. And he grew up being a dancer basically. So everything you see in dirty dancing, he required zero instruction. He's known how to do that his entire life. So uh, yeah. you let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you think about dancing and ballet, the only people in better shape than a male ballet dancer is a male Olympic gymnast. Those guys are in shape like fuck. I mean, they are just cut up to shit. So it's it, it, it definitely takes a lot of physicality to do this. So um, back to uh, to Ronda Rousey and everything. Being, if she's going to play Dalton, like let's, or let's say, you know, a character with a, a different name, but basically the same persona. It's all about being cold. Like, Dalton is basically almost emotionless through the entire movie, except when he gets pissed. Like, he's very reserved, doesn't really say a whole lot. You know, he's kind of doing the man with no name thing, where he just goes in there, does his thing, only talks when he has something to say. And I honestly think, based upon the interviews that I've seen with Ronda Rousey, just her opinions of what people think about it, like, they think she looks mannish because she's actually freaking built and shit. She is so curt and to the point about those people, you know, and the, and the haters basically that I think she'd be perfect. She's like, I, this is an exact quote. She's like, my body's not designed to fuck millionaires. I'm designed to beat people up. And I'm like, wow. And she's just dead panning it, selling. And I'm like, I'm genuinely afraid of this woman and I am not a small man. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to this, man. I think that this is actually going to be awesome. This will be one of the very few examples where when you, gender change a quote-unquote classic movie that it'll be okay that no one's going to notice it'll hit the ground running and it's all good i don't know i don't know if i'm as optimistic i'm i'm more still of the mind leave a good thing along but we'll see i'll i'll watch it i'll give it the, the benefit of the doubt it's not but... a great movie like i mean you you can make a better roadhouse movie <clears throat> you can't make a better ghostbusters movie we both i don't that. know man you can't do that with sam elliott and 
Patrick Swayze. Dude, I'm not. I'm not hating that's, on that's it. A, I love damn, fucking Roadhouse, but I'm just that's saying a damn it's not. Dream team right there. It's not a great movie. <laughs> it's. It will never be a great movie. I mean, it's. It's not. It's just. It's a fun movie, and fun movies are fine. I'm not hating on them. It, it's definitely a, a '80s guilty pleasure. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, dude, there's a reason that Family Guy made fun of it. You know, in that freaking episode where he starts kicking everything, and then oh, I mean, and, and we like, make Roadhouse. fun of it for, for sure. I guess it's. I guess it's just. <laughs> The ridiculousness of it that everybody, you know, loves to make fun of it. Yes. But, um, when Brian's but yeah. like, what did you get? The, what did you get from that movie? It's like, I got everything I need. It's like, the only thing that you take from that movie is that kicking solves every problem. He's like, what'd you say to me? Psh, Roadhouse. You know, I mean, yeah. That's what was the, she was in the news about, she was wanting to play a, um, superhero. Uh, Miss Marvel, but apparently that's going to somebody else. Okay. She would make yeah. it very she was, interesting. Uh, Carol Danvers, I have to say. She was, um, she was really, you know, petitioning hard sure. to get that. She was posting it on her Twitter, I think, you know, pictures of her photoshopped in the uniform and whatnot. So Why wouldn't you want to be in a Marvel movie right now? I mean, that's, uh, like, that's I mean, hitting everybody the jackpot. And did you see that, um, speaking of Marvel movies, did you see Chris Evans basically was just like, you know how he initially had said that... Um, you know, the last Avengers, I guess, was going to be his last movie. Mm -hmm. And now he's kind of like, you know, now basically everything Marvel touches, you know, is is gold. It's a great movie. He's like, you know, all they have to do is ask and I'm there. So it sounds like he's, you know, on board for, um, you know, more movies. Just, you know, if they want him, they've got him. I'm so. fine with that. He's... I originally was very skeptical about this simply because he played a Marvel superhero before, but guys, he was not a great human torch, but he's an absolutely fucking fantastic Captain America. Uh, there's he's, this is so attached to him now that the only comic book person that is more attached to a role is Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman yeah. will always be Wolverine period. Like when he retires, end it. I don't want to yeah. see somebody else play like when the Indiana Jones, now that it's basically over, Harrison Ford is the only guy that can play him. End it. I'd rather go out on top. What? You don't think Shia LaBeouf could? No. <laughs> Although the, there there is talk about you know people continuing in Anna Jones like Chris Pratt and Bradley Cooper and I think yeah I've, I've seen Chris Pratt. I, I he think would he make might. It interesting Indiana Jones. Like, would it be the same? No, because no. he's not, dude. There's no one like Harrison Ford. That's the problem is that he's like, he's not really acting. He's just being Harrison Ford. So it's, uh, I don't know. It's, I, I'm, of, I'm of two minds about that. But um, speaking of movies, okay, so this has been rumored for a while. Um, I'm actually amazed that this is coming to fruition. I figured this was just like fanboy rumor shit. But uh, so ways back, uh, King Kong. Um, the new King Kong movie, Skull Island, which they've been working about, which is, I, I guess you could say, a prequel to the events of King Kong. You know, it's all about the natives and what actually happens on the island and everything, which I thought was a really cool idea. You know, it's not the same recycled story, you know, hey, we're going to go get Kong, bring him to fucking mainland New York, and shit's going to get fucked up, and we won't know why. Fucking nature wins, blah, 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 blah. But no, this is actually about the events on the island. So, someone took notice that the same company that was doing Skull Island Legendary Pictures also holds the American rights to Godzilla. And they were like, well, then the, there's no legal reason why they couldn't be in the same movie. It's all under the same fucking tent. And I was like, nah, they're never going to do that, dude. I mean, not to mention, King Kong is like 50 feet tall, and Godzilla is the size of a fucking skyscraper. Like, mm -hmm. like, as the old saying goes, what quarrel does a boot have with a spider? You know? He'd just be like... Pfft. Game over. Bye bye Kong. Come on Kong. But you know, dude, it's Godzilla. He's a product of radiation. There's a million different ways you could spin this, but it seems that it's actually going to happen. We're going to see. Is King this Kong. going to be a tie-in from the last Godzilla movie? Yep. We're going to see okay, cool. Kong and Godzilla throw down. I've I've never asked. Well, I don't think I've asked you this before. Were you a fan of this last Godzilla movie? Fuck yeah, I was. Are you kidding? I me? was too. And I, you know, there were a lot of um, mixed reviews on that. Fuck them. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. This movie was amazing. Well, you know, they really kind of held the curtain over the monsters until yes. the end. And the, uh, to me, the payoff was worth it. That fight Fuck at the end yeah. is incredible. 
And I love the suspense of those movies. And, you know, it really took me back to, like, Cloverfield. Absolutely. And, and you know, not getting the payoff until the very end, which I think was well worth it in that movie as well. But um, that that battle at the end when Epic. fucking used the, the laser... Uh, Atomic the, breath. Atomic breath, yeah. I mean, Jesus. When it showed the awesome. spikes lighting up, like... I was like, oh, shit, it's on. Yeah, because we didn't know, you know, if it was going to happen or not. I know. We didn't I know was waiting. I'm like, dude, why is he procrastinating? Like, blast their ass, man. Come on. Right. And, and it was so, up. like, I was just like, yes, <sighs> yes. yes. <laughs> Nobody fucks with Godzilla, man. Right, right. But, yeah, I, and people who were like, man, it sucked. You only got to see Godzilla for, like, three minutes. And I'm like. That's why it was good. Yeah, I mean, but you got to see the other monsters all throughout the movie, you know? I mean, it was kind of the build-up to actually seeing it, but yeah, I mean, I love that movie. I thought it was great. A lot of wink-winks, too. Did you catch the, the Mothra reference that they yeah. had? Yeah. Little, the guy had a little pet moth, and there was a little sticker on it that said Mothra, and it was in the fallout zone. Right. So that makes perfect sense. You know, that's going to fuck with the mythos a little bit, because Mothra's supposed to be really old, but um, haven't they confirmed that he's fighting King Ghidorah in the next movie? Um, I hadn't heard anything, honestly. Um, you know, I knew when it first had come out and the initial success of it, mm-hmm. they were talking about a remake, and then I saw the initial, you know, talk of them maybe combining Godzilla and King Kong or yeah. whatever. So um, that's kind of where I saw it left off. But I don't know, you know, what the talk is for where this next movie's going so i honestly don't think they should rush because do king Ghidorah is godzilla's lex luther that is his ultimate nemesis you know it's the only monster that's ever truly giving him run for its money it almost killed him actually once um i think they should save that for part three and end it as part of the trilogy like this one maybe i mean mothra would be cool you know maybe have him take on a couple monsters at once like two different yeah. monsters instead of two mutos like mothra and what would be another good one? Mecha Godzilla would kind of be stupid. Yeah, and I think that only works in the cheesy. I know Japanese Plus, ones. I'll, on the same token, <clears throat> um, since we're talking about Godzilla crossovers, they have said we we don't know yet, but Guillermo del Toro has gone on record and said that if the guys from Legendary ask him, that we will see a Pacific Rim Godzilla crossover. Oh wow! Which yeah, that'd be really be good. Awesome, dude! A fucking Jaeger against Godzilla. That would be fucking cool. Aren't they making another uh, yeah, Pacific dude. Rim? Dude, okay. I, I loved Pacific Rim. Like, all I the hate too. that that movie got, I'm like, you guys don't know what you're talking about. This movie's a fucking masterpiece. But, you know, I'd like to see... Um, I'd like to see more... Um, I guess, story about why they're sending the monsters. Sure. In this one, I'd, I'd like to see some of that explained, but... Um, that movie was huge overseas. Absolutely. It was huge. They, they liked them some just for that movies. reason. Yeah, yeah. And that what was the last like really Jurassic Park? They like dinosaurs too overseas. Anything big, the the Asian community just goes fucking crazy for that shit. And I think that's why we saw so many Transformers is because yeah. those were huge over there. I don't think the superhero movies are quite as big overseas. Not quite as big. It's but I tell you what. What, um, who's big overseas still is Tom Cruise. Like, you know, regardless of what he's doing in movies in the United States, like, they love Tom Cruise. They will go to any of his movies. And, you know, I, I completely agree. Like, I mean, all of his movies, you know, that he's come out with and probably the past five to eight years have been awesome. Uh, like, I, I would really, it'd be hard to go back and look at the, catalog of movies and that he's put out you know and find something that's been bad but but yeah it's it's you know if you can unlock what people like overseas it doesn't matter what the hell you know we do in the united states like they'll keep putting out movies you know for it agreed but uh but yeah like i guess that's pretty much it for movie news there hadn't really been any just blockbuster news here in the past couple weeks i guess it's been slow with labor day but um, I'm I'm pretty excited about Star Wars with all the new um, toys and stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, they had the big release last week of all the new toys. Did are you going to pick up any Star Wars gear? Got out of toys a long time ago, thank God, because this oh, what you man. see behind me, ladies and gentlemen, sucks up enough of my income. 
So I, I can only do so much. I mean, th th with the amount of things that I collect, I mean, let's see. I just took on Laserdisc. I already do video games. I already do He-Man. I already do Garbage Pill Kids. <laughs> You've got to draw the line somewhere where it's just like I can't collect anything else. Well, like I, I will selectively get stuff. I don't try and get everything. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few things that caught my eye. I really like the little remote control droid that you can do with your that, iPhone. I admit is really cool. Yeah, I, I want to get that and um, probably won't pick up a lightsaber or anything like that. But I saw some pretty cool, like, you know, smaller statues of, like, Yoda and stuff that that would be neat to pick up. But, but yeah, uh, that's been a big deal because pretty much every retailer is selling out of Star Wars stuff. I, I would imagine a lot of those toys that came out in the past week are probably going to be on a lot of those rare toy list for the holidays oh, I'm you know? sure. and i, I was telling sure. my, my girlfriend she's a um, third grade teacher and i was like she was like i can't believe all she was in target the other day i can't believe all of the star wars stuff and i was like yeah i was like you know that's going to be the toys and the stuff that all your kids are talking about this holiday season because that movie is going to be so huge and she's like, well, you know, I guess you're right because I'm I'm seeing those toys everywhere now. So yeah, Star Wars pretty much invented uh, franchising, I guess you could say for toys. Um, a lot of people don't know this, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, when George Lucas got the original Star Wars made to get the extra bit of money he needed for the budget, he basically gave away um, his rights to. Uh, he eventually got them back, but. Um, he gave away his uh, residuals for the movie as the director, meaning uh, the box office back-end payout he got zero of, and he gave those up for the licensing rights. So all the toys and everything like that, he was the sole owner of that. All of that cash for licensing all that shit to toy companies was, and I think it is, um, now that he sold it to Disney, was going straight to him. And if oh, you, wow. Honestly... The toys for Star Wars made like 10 to 20 times the amount of cash that the movie did or probably ever will. Like, I, I think I saw the projections, <clears throat> excuse me, on what Star Wars toys are going to make. And they were comparing it to uh, the Pixar movie Scar, uh, Cars, uh, which did really well in the toy department. That's ridiculous. And this was like, this was out in the stratosphere. They were saying like $2 billion. They're talking $20 billion for this in licensing and toy sales. Mm -hmm. I'm like, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Star Wars basically created pop culture. It was basically the movie that made being a nerd. It got the ball rolling for it kind of being acceptable um, to geek out on things. Comic book movies, like I would think would be the next incarnation of that, which pushed us finally out of the nerd closet. And all of us came out and be like, yeah, we like comics. So what, you know, now it's hip to do that. Now it's uniquely American uh, to like those things. And don't forget my, my Star Trek friends out there. Yes. But... <sighs> because because the fans are what brought back Star Trek. Yes. Because yes. The, the, comic, uh, the conventions and stuff and the grassroots um, culture brought back um, Star Trek. And that's why they made the motion picture right. uh, back in the day. So, um, you know, fans play a big part into you know, a lot of these movie franchises and stuff, um, you know, and I remember a lot of old school, like Star Wars fans back in the day with their, you know, badges on their blue jean jackets and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, back standing in line when they remastered all the original series for VHS back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I remember going to the movie theater and, and watching those, on their second run and you know that really catapulted it back into the mainstream again for what we see today but Absolutely. uh but yeah it, it's been pretty um pretty sci-fi uh fall here uh coming yeah. up and winter looks like with star wars and oh yeah and all that so um pretty exciting time for star wars fans i there's very little doubt in my mind that star wars is going to set several box office records i think that that's yeah inevitable that at the very least the opening weekend record it's gonna fucking smoke jurassic world um it might even set the all-time box office record i mean it's you know and it takes certain properties to to for people to go watch movies several times mm -hmm. 
And this is one of those franchises where, you know, the fanboys are going to go multiple times to watch this movie. And, you know, that's what really makes the, the box office, um, pull draws, you know, so much bigger. And, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. I think it could really set some records up. It'll be interesting to see what it does overseas because I can't remember, um, I, I worked at a movie theater when the original or when the second trilogy came out mm-hmm. and, uh, I can't remember how those did overseas. If they were as big of a draw as they were in the United States, I would think that they are. Oh, sure. Um, but I wonder how, how it'll do in Asia because Asia is the, really the, if you can break into the Chinese market, oh, like yeah. the Chinese market's huge. And, um, you know, if they all come out to watch something, then, then, you know, it's it turns into a really big success, but, um, you know, really the Asian and North American markets are what really pull in most of the money for a lot of these movie, um, studios. Absolutely. But yeah. Um, have you got anything else, buddy? No. It's been well, a I'm, slow week, guys. So um, Jimbo's got a really big surprise for y'all for next week. I'm oh, not going I to... do. Yes, we're not going to tell you what it is, but I, I will tell you it's a laser yep. disc. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll give you that much. But uh, this is one. This this one is more or less one of the reasons I began collecting laser discs because this is not on DVD. It is not on Blu-ray. It has a very rabid fan base it has its own website the original stars have done interviews for the anniversaries of it and everything and as as far as i know um there are no plans to release on dvd and blu-ray which for the fucking life of me i can't imagine why but i was lucky enough to be able to get it on laserdisc it's on its way right now um i think it will be here maybe today um it might be downstairs at my front door when i finish shooting this podcast i'm hoping it is um but uh at the very least it'll be here on monday so Stay tuned next week, guys. This this is pretty much my holy grail laser disc, the only one I've ever seen for sale. All right, and this actually reminds me of um, something that I forgot to bring up, What's and that? this is a perfect segue to it. Um, you know, speaking to movies and stuff that you can't get on DVD, that you can't find, um, my buddy uh, Monk found this app called iOffer. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or not before, but basically it's this uh, app where you can, where people like sell like high quality bootlegs. And now I'm not for getting bootlegs and stuff. If it's something that you can go out and legitimately get for a decent price, you know, but there's some really cool stuff on this and they do like really high quality stuff with like, I don't know if you can, let me see if I can zoom in on this and you can see, but they did basically the Ghostbusters, the cartoon, and all of the discs have graphics on it. Wow. And stuff you can get, I'm looking here, the entire series of the real Ghostbusters for $33. Holy shit. And then another one that you'll be excited for, I I don't know if you watched this when you were younger, but Captain N, the Game Master. And this is a... This is a series that um, didn't really have a, a really long run, no. but uh, they did an initial printing of DVDs and actually quit making them. So yeah. to get the DVDs, you have to pay like 90 bucks, mm-hmm. and it's not for a very big set at all. No. And I've heard of some problems with some of the discs when they actually did the initial printing where some of the discs don't work. Or whatnot, or maybe it's one of the discs. But anyways, Captain N, the Game Master for fifteen dollars, the complete series. Nice. And you can look at some of the reviews, but basically, like you can um, offer this amount of money to the people. And I'm waiting to hear uh, if when he gets the first batch in mm-hmm. of DVDs that he ordered and see how they are before I order. But I'm gonna keep y'all updated on this, and here's one that you're really going to be excited for. And we've talked about this before. Oh, yeah. And um, me and uh, Jimbo really lamented the fact that um, Tales from the Crypt is not offered on um, HBO nope. Go, and they're they've never done any DVD printings of it because apparently the rights for Tales from the Crypt are, are all wrapped up in legal battles. I do. So, have, I need to correct you. I do have Tales from the Crypt on DVD. 
Oh, you do? Yes. Wait, the series? Yes, I have the entire I thought, thing. I thought you said that... It's never going to be on... It, the The reason that Are I Are you talking about the original it, HBO series? Uh-huh. I have the whole thing downstairs. Okay. Found it at Goodwill. But there is a complaint that I have with that. Okay. It's, okay, so it's on DVD. Um, they did not do anything to even remotely upscale it to DVD quality, uh, meaning it's still in 4 by 3 and okay. I think if you're going to put it on DVD, I think that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, if they don't want to upscale with the Blu-ray quality, okay, fine. Um, as far as I know, it was shot on original 35 millimeter, um, since this was the beginning of cable television shows, so they weren't shooting with Panavision or anything. Um, it needs to be re-released, not necessarily on Blu-ray, but just a high-quality DVD so that it's at least an anamorphic. Maybe quality. that's what it was. It never was released to Blu-ray that I'm thinking and of. And it should be. But I yeah. mean, if you want the complete series, you can get it. I found the first four seasons at Goodwill for like three bucks, whatever, and I ended up getting the rest. But it wasn't the quality on it is just not there. Like if it's watchable, like it's not fucking god awful. But considering that they went through all the trouble to put this shit on DVD, right? They could have done a lot better job. I mean, guys, this is Paramount. Damn, That's I need to get company. that. I... They, they, they honestly could have done a lot better job see. with this. Um, it was cool that they brought John Cass here back to do the voice uh, for the Crypt Keeper. So he's talking in between screens on the DVD. You know, so it's the real guy with the real puppet, you know, saying like, you know, hello, kitties, you bought this DVD, I see. You know, so that's <laughs> that part's kind of cool, but they just could have done a better job. All right. Well, I'm looking at some prices of this online and it looks like it's still it's pretty high up there. But on so, this website. You can get the entire series for um, it looks like eighteen ninety nine. That's a pretty good deal. And then you can, you know, the Star Wars movies that you were showing us, the Ewok movies yeah. mm -hmm. that they never redid. Yep. On DVD, you can get those all for nine ninety nine on. A DVD that works. Yeah, so I'm I'm interested to see you know what uh, what what the quality is, but yeah, I didn't even know that they had released that on DVD. I, I need to long time ago, but yeah, definitely pick those up. It's cause... they need to redo it. <laughs> they really do. I was really disappointed when I put it on. Like, really? Yeah, because you know when I was initially like looking that up, because you know me and you had talked about that, and I was like. Why in the world? And I, I guess I assumed that the the rights weren't, um, you know, where they could even do the DVDs. But okay, cool. I think well, they were. Able I learned to something new, today. but they just they can't put it on VOD because HBO doesn't own all of it. Uh, the rest of their shows uh, they own a hundred percent of. But um, this is the one and, exception. And since uh, Jimbo doesn't have a show and tell for us today, going back to the DVD front, yes, sir. I've got a very special. Um, complete series that I've talked about in a past episode that I wanted to show off, and that is the Lost nice. Nice. Um, Collector's Edition. And there's a lot of really neat um, Easter eggs in this box set. Um, namely, it comes with um, a game that they actually played on the series, um, and it comes with like some really high-quality uh, game pieces, which are um, some white and black, which are actual um, rocks to play the, the game pieces, but uh, I mean to play the game, but mm -hmm. it was actually, uh, this game was played in like season five or six, mm -hmm. I want to say. And um, so I thought that was cool that, that that was included with it, but it also comes with like little um like a journal page from the black rock nice um and it comes with a black light and there's a, and true form of lost there's all these hidden easter eggs in the actual stuff that comes with the dvd set so you pull the top off this onk and then there is a hidden message from jacob Nice. Uh, yeah. And anyways, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and spoil the surprise for you guys because this has been out for forever. But um, throughout all of the the pieces of everything, it has clues. And 
you can't really see it on there, but it, there's a, a figure that you keep seeing throughout all the clues, and it shines to this. And you, there's actually a hidden DVD wow. back here in nice. the box set. So um, pretty cool. That, That's uh, awesome, actually. Yeah, it's it's really cool that they included that much stuff. Um, you know, it, it's not in production anymore. If you buy Lost, it's a, a completely different box set. Mm -hmm. But that's something you can pick up, you know, for a fairly decent price on eBay. And for those of you fans of Lost, I know me and Jimbo are really big fans of Lost. Sure, it really is a must buy because I mean it is so cool. You know, just finding all the little hidden Easter eggs and it really uh, immerses you in the, the lost world. Um, and the lost world. It, it really does. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a I, was, I, was I know, a Jurassic, a Park. Sorry. Jurassic Park, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but anyways, I thought that was a cool, uh, collector's awesome. edition. but I'm, um, I'm a little jelly of that. But, um, guys, I think that is, that is it for this week. I think it is. I think that's. I think we're nerded out for the day. Yeah, I'm, I just, man, I'm tired now. I've nerded out. <laughs> I nerded out so hard. Damn, dude, <laughs> need a towel? Shit. <laughs> yeah, let me towel off let me a little bit. Clean up here. Well, thank you uh, to everyone. Um, I know we're we seem to be popular with you folks who uh, have long commutes and long car rides. Apparently, a lot of you guys like to listen to us um, on iTunes. So um, it is absolutely our pleasure to keep you company. I'm in your car ride. I have a long commute too, so I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, just to pass the time. So uh, for all the support and uh, great feedback that we've been getting from all of you guys, thank you so much. Um, if you <clears throat> excuse me, would like to leave a uh, user question, um, since we didn't really have any this week, um, you can comment on this video either on uh, my channel or on Tyler's. Uh, you can hit us up on the Nerd Bucket Facebook page and leave a comment there. Um, just there's, there's a hundred different ways guys leave a comment somewhere Tyler or I or both we'll see it and we will definitely give you a shout out and a mention on this show so again thank you all for the support we really appreciate it I am Jimbo of YouTube's Retro Game Lounge that is Tyler of YouTube's Metroid's Prime please go by our channel and check us out we're a bunch of cool fucking dudes we'll nerd <laughs> with you we'll talk with you you're gonna get your you're gonna get your nerd fix man like that's that's why we're here we are the dealers we'll give you everything you need well <laughs> Tyler, thank you for joining me on this latest episode of Nerd Bucket on our show, which is awesome. And probably Damn right we'll, it is. We'll go for... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to go have myself a good laugh. We'll see you next time. All right. Later, guys. Yeah.